Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Here we are in sunny Paris at an event called Viva Technology, where we've been invited over by Renault to look at their advancements in autonomous vehicles. And there's probably some other stuff in there as well. Come on, let's have a look. Two halls, some car stuff, we'll see. And um, there's definitely some Renaults in it. And some robots, there's always a robot at a tech fair. Where would a tech fair be without a robot? Renault, there we are. So there's two cars that interest me here and one van. The easy pod, little two-seater, fully autonomous concept based upon Twizy underpinnings. Uh, a fully autonomous Zoe with some interesting doors and a postman Pat van, Le Pat van, which I don't think it's called. Okay, here's the Zoe. What do you notice that's different? Apart from the domes and the bits of uh, LiDAR and radar, one door on one side, big one. Is a door. But you know, this is interesting and stuff, but we can't get in it and play with it here. So we're going to go a bit further out of Paris to play in one. I'm going to get my little driving experience, passenger experience, not driving, um, in the Zoe. Those are two autonomous Zoes there, and the third one is here waiting for me. Uh, I've actually already hailed it um, on, on my app. They're all slightly different. Look at the door on this one. It's not conventional. They're experimenting with different door solutions because I'm going to be sitting where the dashboard is, where the front-facing passenger used to be. This is Guillaume. Guillaume's the manager of the Autonomy Renault project. Uh, this is Jim, who's the silent partner in this. Jim's just there because of current legislation. We're actually on public roads um, in, a, in a, an environment that isn't controlled. So we've got uh, lorries going up and by because there's, there's some building going on with the students on bicycles and pedestrians. Uh, there's public buses. There's a lorry. Uh, so this car's about to go out into all of that unrehearsed, and Guillaume's going to explain to us what the car's having to deal with. So I'm right in thinking you have different variations of the autonomous uh, yeah, concept. Yeah, okay, so basically, uh, you know, when you see uh, an article or a picture of an autonomous car in the magazine or something, you have the, the seat turned, and so it's like a, a living room. Yeah. Okay, so what we wanted to do is, uh, from here, uh, test it on the rear car, yeah. see if people accept it or not. So yeah. we want to evaluate the acceptability of the service globally. Yeah. So uh, to do that, we had to change the openings. And as we want to have a, a shared, a pooling service, yeah. so we want to be able to easily get in and out. So we want to have a big door, you know, to, uh, to be able to get in and out. And so we evaluate in different type of uh, um, um, interior uh, modifications and yep. also the opening system. There's a lot, there's a lot going on around here, um, and obviously this is speeds up to 30 kph. 30 kilometers per hour, so it's really adapted for a campus. Yeah. And uh, as we are in campus, we have also a lot of pedestrians going everywhere, yes. and uh, not uh, always checking if there is something coming up. So uh, when we have, so as safety is the most uh, important thing is in, in this experimentation is that. Uh, when we have someone very close to the to the street, yeah. uh, we will reduce the speed and adapt. Uh, eventually, it can it can cross the street? So we want to yeah. be very very careful about that. It does feel like it's reacting quick quickly. It's not. Well, it's going to be coming up to various things like junctions and round, yeah. roundabouts. Yeah. So coming back, coming up, we have a um, uh, left turn. So we we'll cross the, the traffic coming on the opposite direction. Oh, okay. Yeah. So basically the difficulty here is to know when 
to engage. You yeah. Know? When do you have time to, to, to get into yeah. traffic? So basically we want to be able to reduce the speed to be safe, but yeah. also uh, get smoothly into traffic, you yeah. know? So that's the challenge. Because so it has to be quite quick to react it, yeah. because it's going to be an urban centric vehicle. Uh, like in Paris, in rush hour, yeah. there's not many opportunities yeah. to join yeah. traffic and find a exactly. gap. So here to learn, it's a, a very good environment because we have this situation that could happen very quickly, yeah. uh, someone crossing or anything, yeah. but we don't have too much density. Yeah. Uh, and so we can learn and, and, uh, and then build the system for the, for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Always good to taste the future. Yeah. Even if it is slightly disconcerting. <laughs> Sitting backwards. <laughs>
uh, the journeys it goes on. They're getting all that data to see how useful this will be. Now, I've had a crawl around underneath, and I got told off for poking around. And I would say this looks like a pretty finished vehicle. It's, they're still saying it's an experimental vehicle, so it's more than a concept, but it's not yet a production vehicle. But I'm looking around it thinking it's, it looks pretty close to production in my view. I just want to know what it's based on. Is it a Zoe? Well, you won't tell me, that's why I'm under there. <laughs> you remember the Easy Pro? The autonomous little pod vehicle that I went to see in France and I got the coffee from. This is like a real world development of that. It's got a very, very, very deep floor. Seating position's excellent. Glass roof which in theory could have some solar on it. In fact, it would make perfect sense for there to be some solar on here. You've got a big uh, touchscreen display here and um, really good visibility because, of course, you've got glass roof, very thin pillars here. It's quite a deep windscreen with this funny little kind of bubble semi-bonnet thing. Oh, and that folds away, look. So if you don't have any friends, you can just have a notebook and a pen instead. It's always useful. But the other interesting thing about this, the Easy Flex, is that there's another one of these at the show, which is being tested extensively at the moment. Let's go and have a look at that one, because that is a proper Postman Pat van. La Banque Postale, in other words, the French equivalent of the Royal Mail. Now, Renault have uh, given them some of their vans, some of the Easy Flex vans to test because the idea is they want to experiment with them in the real world. Lots of short journeys, lots of stop starts. Here it is. So this is a, a variation of what we've just seen with a slightly different back on it, full of uh, parcels. And there's, uh, I think La Poste have got something like eight of these on test. They're gleaning all the telematics, they're gleaning all of the uh, information of what typically a postal service needs out of one of these. How it's doing for range, the journeys it does. And what's good about that is, I believe, uh, Renault are working partnerships with other delivery companies and they're looking for one in the UK to help with experimentation. My local postman would love one of these. It's a great interior, I like it. It's a huge cutout for the passenger. This is where commercial vehicles need to go, especially last mile type of stuff. We know that there's only going to be more and more things home delivered. So by very definition, you need more of these sorts of vehicles to be adopted. If this can do 150 kilometers um, EV, that's a lot of deliveries, isn't it? Before you have to go back to your depot. Way more than you would do in a day. Well, you know, I could spend the rest of the afternoon looking at robots like an old man, or I could just leave and say thank you very much for watching Fully Charged. As usual, if you're a Patreon, we couldn't do this sort of thing without you, so thank you for contributing. If you like this, click like. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, until the next time, au revoir.